And so kind of knowing that, and again, focusing on what you can do differently moving forward. Any? I would take it a step farther. I wouldn't necessarily see her reaction as angry in that moment, mm -hmm. but really understanding the legal guidelines that are out there around um, being trans in the workplace and the supports that are necessary for folks to be able to access all services, um, including jobs and yeah. employment. Absolutely. Um, any other things that stood out in the video? Um, but yeah, with the, the last statement, the last little bit tends to throw people off, but the first part of what she says is also really powerful, saying, what's more important, how you see me or how I see me? And it, it's about honoring that and making space to honor and recognize people, right? And doing our best. Yeah. And understanding that there were folks across the spectrum that were like, I don't really care. Use whatever pronouns you want. Even if they may have pronouns that are important to them, they are across the board. Um, but also understanding that we are human and we're going to make mistakes. And so let's dig into that a little bit deeper and the fact that every day we can make a mistake, whether it's from like driving and forgetting to turn on our directional or messing up someone's pronouns. Um, one may have a bigger impact than the other, but I still get annoyed when people don't turn on a directional. <laughs> and when we think of pronouns, we think of this uh, unintentional when we uh, misgendering that happens in the process. So what would you do if you were to mess up someone's pronouns or name in a conversation? Apologize. Apologize. How would you apologize? Like a, a long-winded apology around how you forgot your coffee this morning, someone else forgot their directional, <laughs> you were just running late, you just that, did it. Did work. You seem like you would have a long-winded <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have been on the receiving end of a long-winded apology before, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, long-winded, giving the full reasoning. Short. No. I would just short, short, short probably. Short. Quick, like, a genuine apology. Sorry. Like, I am sorry, or I apologize, and then correct yourself. Ooh, I love that additional piece, is that correction. So coming in with a short apology, correcting, and then moving on in the conversation. And sometimes the apology isn't necessary in that moment. Um, it can be the simple, like, oh, light bulb moment, I should switch to pronouns, and then moving on in the conversation. Another one is there are sometimes folks who will correct you in the moment, um, which is a, a genuine offering of saying like, I'm correcting you because I see that you are a person that will respect and honor my pronouns moving forward. So we don't see all trans and gender non-conforming folks offering that um, in that correction, but when they see someone that they know will honor that, they are more willing to give that. So I'm going to show a little example later, but I love thanking someone in that moment. Thank you, thank you so much for giving me that information. Uh, I'm going to do better. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. No. Oh, okay, I'll get there. Um, <laughs> high five. It's not there. This is what this is what I've got for you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> messing up. So now we're we kind of got into this before. We're in a meeting situation. Um, and someone else is messing up someone's pronouns in that meeting, how would you intervene in that moment? Maybe the whole cop would hurt. Ooh, a, a cop under the breath hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Very, very subtle. <laughs> how about some other options? Either modeling the correct pronoun when referring to the person. Yeah. Or correcting them if it's not going to make the whole situation super awkward. Good point there of like, you could just call them out and let them know, hey, you're using the wrong pronouns, but there's that piece of like, oh no. Um, but I love that first one of uh, being the next person to talk in that situation and just overemphasizing pronouns in the conversation. So that folks are really, you are showing your confidence around that person's pronouns and hopefully that person will clue in and really get that messaging. Some other pieces I come in, you can have the conversation afterwards. Hey, I heard that you were using these pronouns and I just wanted to let you know that this person uses these pronouns. Um, or when we think of working with youth more specifically, they may be out to you as a provider, but may not be out to their parents, guardians, or caregivers. 
And so what we have heard from other professionals is going into a meeting and having a check-in conversation with that youth or patient ahead of time. Hey, if they're going to use the wrong pronouns during this meeting, would you like me to correct them in that moment? Do you, do you yourself want to correct them? Or are what would be best? Because there are some folks who are saying, you know what, I'd rather just ignore the whole pronoun thing. If they mess up my pronouns, I just want this meeting to get over with. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to be like a topic. Um, and so offering that support and recognizing that that might be really difficult for them in that meeting session to have that happen repeatedly and offering that support ahead of time. And what we're talking about is really um, confronting that harm in the moment instead of being neutral, silent, or supporting that harm that's continuing. Any questions on messing up pronouns? Sweet. This is my perfect moment to talk about how much I love Grey's Anatomy. Um, I hope you all are fans because Shonda Rhimes is a genius. Uh, this is a short clip from last season uh, that starts to get into trans identities in a medical setting and some instances that may happen or are actually very common for transgender folks. So we'll watch this quick scenario and then we'll debrief afterwards. Pushing me to face my fears. She was right. It was a lot of fun. God, why is she always right? I know how you feel. I mean, fun. Until she swerved to miss a tree and flipped us five times. Hey, we <sighs> should get a CT angio to determine the location of her vascular injuries. There. Excuse me? There. Injury. Not her. I'm a day. I'm gender queer. Non binary. Got it. Thank you for letting us know your pronouns. Their preferred pronouns are they and them. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, well, all right then. Um, well, let's get you. All? You. It's fine. Great. Well, your ultrasound is fine. Let's get you up to CT. So what we saw there was there was a doctor that came into the situation after folks were already working with them, and he misgendered that person in the process. And what I loved most in that setting was that the doctors that were aware of this were able to step in and support the other one and saying like, no, nope, this is all good. Here is that information that you need to be able to move forward in this conversation and supporting this uh, patient. Another piece that stands out for me later in the episode, uh, this doctor on the left here processes through those emotions that are coming up, like, I didn't even know I was misgendering that person. I don't even know what they're talking about with they them pronouns. What does all of this mean? And what is uh, key about that is he is doing it behind closed doors, not in front of the patient, but with the folks that were right there and clearly had that information to share. So the big piece being that, yes, the patient corrected in that moment, which was wonderful for them, and that the processing happened after the fact behind closed doors. Do you have something to add? May I? We haven't added this before, but I think go right ahead. Um, another thing is being mindful of who you're having those conversations with. It can be really easy to go to the people who you know have the same beliefs about things as you do. Instead, try to go to somebody else. Go to the people who um, you know are really passionate and really care about LGBTQ plus people feeling safe and welcoming. Um, and yeah. Another piece is that you have great resources like us. Um, so we are more than, we're just a phone call away or an email and we're more than willing to help process through these things and help you all out with the best practices that are coming up in your specific scenarios. Um, that's what we're literally here for. <laughs> but moving right along, we're going to finish up with some best practices that we like to highlight. Um, the first just being sharing pronouns. Um, as I said before, doing that in your introduction with folks or even putting it in your email signature. Um, I feel like that's the number one place where just about anyone can get misgendered because we're basing pronouns off of someone's name if we've never emailed them before. Um, and then embracing gender neutral language, incorporating they them pronouns into your everyday speech so that it's easier when you come across someone who uses they them pronouns. Um, as well as just making sure that we're making everyone feel welcome in our spaces, especially in healthcare services. 
And lastly, I really like to focus on the fact of believing people. They are the experts of their own experience, and what we are trying to build here are trusting relationships with our patients. And so having these very open conversations and um, asking pronouns, talking about gender, is going to help people feel welcome here at the hospital. And then, uh, yeah, thanks so much for having us today. This is a space for any other questions that are outlined, or maybe outside of this presentation. Sweet. I don't have any questions, but I do want to apologize if I offended you for what I 